Hey everyone, welcome to a Cozy Christmas Podcast's YouTube channel, and welcome to this uh, Cozy Christmas Book Corner. I've got a couple of great books I want to share with you today, uh, something to get you in the Christmas mood with maybe even a dash of Halloween. So I'm trying out a different format today for this other than just straight podcasting and hope it comes across okay. Uh, I don't have anything real Christmassy behind me, but I am in my uh, cozy Christmas t-shirt. Uh, a little bit of a shameless plug. You can find the shirt down in the uh, in the links below. Um, and I, I like it, so it makes me happy. All right, but we're here to talk about books. And I've got a couple I want to share with you today. Part of a new series that came out last year, uh, Mrs. Claus and the Santa Land Slains. And the sequel, Mrs. Claus and the Halloween Homicide. And this is a book that's coming out just this month. And I'm going to have an interview with the author, Liz Ireland, on my podcast. And that'll be coming up mid-October, near the end of October or so. Uh, and these books are published by uh, Kensington uh, Press. And so in the interest of disclosure, they did send me these books to uh, review and uh, to see if I would be interested in interviewing one of their uh, authors who are writing Christmas content this year. And absolutely, I was. Uh, however, this book I had already bought as a, a Kindle uh, story because I was already planning on reaching out to the author to be on the podcast. So it was one of those things where like minds came together at the same time. But uh, they sent me a nice paperback copy of this book to review, uh, which is what I'll be doing in this video. I have not yet read the Halloween Homicide book. Uh, I'll be doing that here probably in the next week or two. Uh, but I have finished reading uh, The Santa Land Slains. So let's talk about this. Uh, and if you like Christmas stories, if you like cozy mysteries, if you like um, Christmas in general, I mean, this book is like a, a series made just for you. Uh, when I first heard about it, Mrs. Claus investigating a murder, I thought, that sounds intriguing. Uh, you know, that sounds great. And sure enough, I'm happy to report that this book is everything I hoped it would be. It really is just a, a wonderful Christmassy but uh, very cozy mystery that takes place at the North Pole or uh, Santa Land. A little bit about the world that uh, Liz Ireland builds here. So the story is about a woman named April who marries Nick Claus, who is in fact Santa Claus. Now, Santa or Nick Claus is new in the role of Santa. His brother, who was Santa Claus, was killed over the summer in a mysterious uh, hunting accident. More on that in the book. So April finds out that her fiancé, her husband, uh, is Santa, and Nick Claus is now put in a position that he was not ready for. So we really have both of their characters coming to terms with new roles. I, I love her... Santa Claus mythology uh, and, and world building in this book. She, uh, it's almost like, I guess the easiest way to explain it is think about, think of uh, Downton Abbey and the whole um, who inherits the, the title and who doesn't and that kind of thing. It, it's very much kind of uh, based around that ideal. So Nick being the next in line to inherit the title of Santa uh, becomes Santa. And he's following in the footsteps of someone who did a phenomenal job as Santa, you know, and he wasn't expecting this at all. That's all the background of this story. And then into it comes a murder mystery, which, you know, murders don't happen that often at Santa Land. So, of course, everyone blames April for bringing in all this drama uh, with her and all this, you know, real world stuff into Santa Land. Uh, it, it's just really fantastic. Let me read you a little bit about what the book is about. Uh, love is full of surprises, though few compare to realizing that you are marrying the real-life Santa. April Claus dearly loves her new husband, Nick, but adjusting to life in the North Pole is not all sugar plums and candy canes, especially when a cantankerous elf named Giblet Hollyberry is killed felled by a black widow spider in his stocking shortly after publicly arguing with Nick. Christmas Town is hardly a hotbed of crime, aside from mishaps caused by too much eggnog, but April disagrees with Constable Crinkle's verdict of accidental death. 
As April sets out to find the culprit, it'll mean putting the future of Christmas on the line and hoping her own name isn't on a lethal naughty list. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> this, uh, really a wonderful uh, read. And I, I there's the usual cozy mystery tropes in here, but it's all set at the North Pole. It, it just, it, it works. I... I admit I had some doubts about it when I first heard of it, but having read it, uh, Ireland really does a phenomenal job of grounding it in reality with just a touch of magic to it. You know, I like the North Pole to be magical. Uh, so that might affect some people. It, they don't, at least she doesn't explore the magic side too deeply. Uh, in fact, she doesn't say a whole lot about how it all works. Um, in this case, I think that really works well, that it, it, it grounds the book in reality so you can see this from April's eyes, but it's not too magical where you wonder why doesn't Santa just use some Christmas magic to solve the mystery. Uh, so along the way, you know, she's under suspicion for killing giblet hollyberry which the names are are wonderful in this uh and then but mostly the suspicion lays on santa claus himself i won't tell you uh, of course i won't tell you who done it that's the joy of reading this book uh but the the mystery is good the characters are are wonderful uh i could see this being a series that i would read f m more for the characters even than for the um the mystery itself. You know, there are some books I'll read because of the mystery is good, even if I don't like the characters. Agatha Christie, you know, is one that I don't necessarily care about the characters as much as I, I am intrigued by uh, the mystery plot. Uh, but this, uh, at least in this first one I read, both are very well done, but the characters especially I, I really like. Uh, and so I'm excited to read the sequel uh, that takes place uh, on Halloween. So then in the sequel, Mrs. Claus and the Halloween Homicide, um, Halloween comes to Christmas Town, and it looks like there's another murder uh, of an elf named Tiny Sparkletoe, <laughs> which, again, I love I love the, the names. So that's all I really read about the back. I don't want to give too, away too many spoilers for those who haven't read the first one. Um, but uh, I, So I don't know, you know how this one is. I haven't read it yet. I'm going to. But the first one is definitely a recommendation. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to decide how to rate these books uh, because, uh, I, you know, I want to give a fair and honest review uh, of these books, even though, you know, they were given to me by the, the company. I'm going to judge these books on four categories, and some of them might be weird, but this is what I like. So <laughs> bear with me. Uh, I'm going to judge it on content, on Christmas spirit, on coziness. And then perhaps oddly, but I'm going to judge it also on cover art. So I'll explain that in a minute. Judged on content, like I said, this book just shines in all those areas. It's a good mystery, good characters, good atmosphere. I would say, you know, this is a step above a lot of the cozy mysteries I've read. I don't know if it's because of the addition of Christmas to it that just makes me like it more. Uh, but it, it really is one of the best cozy mysteries I've read. So uh, I would recommend it based on, on content for sure. And, uh, you know, for as far as its intended audience would go, anyone who likes cozy mysteries, anyone who likes books set at Christmas time, uh, which this book is, uh, anyone who, uh, you know, likes to read about Christmas and likes to read about Santa Claus, this takes a very... Uh, I think a very different approach to the Santa myth. It's really creative in that sense. Uh, so it really, it really does well on on content overall. As far as Christmas spirit goes, Christmas spirit is a hard thing to judge. It's very subjective. You, you know, I uh, I would say it's probably lighter on the Christmas spirit, uh, even for for taking place at Christmas time at the North Pole. You know, if I were put it on a scale from Die Hard to Hallmark movie, as far as Christmas spirit goes, it's closer to, you know, the Hallmark movie feelings, uh, but it's not too intense. So, I, again, this is going to come down to what do you like? Um, there's enough Christmas spirit here in the book that it felt Christmassy. 
If you like a real intense Christmassy atmosphere, you might not get that, uh, which is odd considering it takes place at the North Pole. But like I said, it works for me. Uh, it's not too much. It's not overdone. You know, it's hard to promote Christmas spirit when you're investigating a murder. An elf is murdered. <laughs> a poor snowman is murdered, um, melted by a blowtorch. And, and the mystery resolution itself gets a little bit dark at the end. So, uh, you know, this is not necessarily a book about Christmas as it is a book set at Christmas. But that's fine because that's what this book needs to be. Uh, and, and so it might feel at times lighter on the Christmas spirit than, say, other books that are more about Christmas. But this book understands what it needs to be. And I think um, this will be a good read any time of the year, but this will especially be a good read at Christmas time. Um, but it just might not have the intense Christmas spirit that some of you I know like. Uh, that could just be me in that I was reading it in September versus reading it at Christmas time. And that's why I'm looking forward to reading the book about Halloween since it is set at this time of year. I'm wondering if that will feel different in that uh, as I read that. So I'll let you know how that turns out. So I want to judge it also on coziness. This book is is a very cozy read. It's uh, you know a murder mystery, but it's not graphic. It's it's humorous. Uh, the, the cozy atmosphere of being at Santa Land really comes through. Uh, and uh, the, again, the author does a, a great job at making you know this is a book that you could read to really unwind, you know, you're, you're I, I can just imagine you, um, you know, you know, reading this, drinking hot cocoa, sitting by the Christmas tree and, and enjoying a good mystery. You know, if you have time to do that during the Christmas season, uh, this works. So, um, high marks for coziness. And then I want to judge on cover art because I know they say you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but I'm a sucker for a beautifully designed book whether it's the cover art itself or its construction, you know, this one is, is just a typical paperback, but um, it, it feels good in my, it feels good in my hands. The pages, it has good print on it. Um, even to little details like, uh, you know, chapter titles, it's just in this beautiful little cursive writing. Uh, and then the, the, the cover art is, is, simple and beautiful and Christmassy. You know, these, my wife likes to decorate with books, uh, different colored books, you know, she'll decorate depending on the season. And if you do that same thing, these would be great to have out on your, on your shelf or on your fireplace mantle during Christmas time. Uh, you know, even this one being a Halloween book, uh, it still captures that Halloween a little bit of Halloween with Christmas, you know, it, it, it just works. Well, you know, I love being creative. I love uh, painting. So I really want to make sure that, you know, if the cover art is outstanding, I want to make sure these people get credit. So uh, the cover design for both books are designed by uh, Kristen Mills and the cover illustrations are by Olivia Holmes. Uh, and just again, high marks for that. Just a really well done cover art that really complements the book and adds to the, in my mind, it adds to the Christmas spirit and the coziness of the book. Um, it doesn't really do much for the content, which is fine. Um, you don't want to give away spoilers on the cover. What I do like about this book especially is it, you can see there that little, little spider coming down off of uh, Mrs. Claus foot. And that's just a nice touch that you have the, uh, uh, the murder weapon as it were, uh, there on on the cover. This one on the sequel, there's a little spider there as well, um, kind of carrying on that branding. Um, so I don't know anything else that uh, Kristen Mills or Olivia Holmes has done, uh, but I just want to give them a shout out for uh, doing a great job. So all in all, I give Mrs. Claus and the Santa Land Slains four full cups of eggnog. It's <laughs> that's going to be my rating system. Apparently it is well worth the purchase. And if you'd like to get a copy of it to, uh, to read before the interview comes, there'll be a link in the, in the show notes below. And uh, I have some affiliate links down there that will help support, uh, the channel at no extra cost, uh, to you folks. 
And uh, depending on which one you use, there's a bookshop.org link that will also help support local uh, bookstores as well um, if you'd rather go that route. Uh, so please, I encourage you to do that and support your uh, uh, local bookstores that you could you can do that even through online shopping. Um, and, and again, uh, bookshop.org isn't sponsoring this video. It's um, just something I, I came across and, uh, and that I use. So um, go ahead and check those links out down below. Uh, I don't know how often I'll be doing these um, book corner videos, but if you like it, please do hit the thumbs up and subscribe. That helps out our channel so much and I appreciate it. If you want to hear more about uh, what other non-Christmas books I read, you can check out my other YouTube channel, uh, Bookshelf Odyssey, which I'll have linked in the show notes as well. And, uh, as we get closer to Christmas, I may be dropping more of these, give you some book ideas for those uh, bookworms in your life, and uh, hopefully we'll get some more Christmas decorations around uh, and uh, light and spice things up a bit. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, I hope you are enjoying what you read, and uh, let me know what you are reading and what some of your favorite Christmas books are. Uh, let me know in the comments below, and we'll keep the conversation going there, because I'm always on the lookout for new and cozy Christmas reads. And so until next time, I hope that you have a very Merry Christmas. Take care.